doctors, they definitely don't know how much pain you're in day to day. Um, As that feeling of losing uh, blood flow, losing circulation, um, and from there the discomfort grows into more of a bone deep, somewhere between sharp and achy pain, um, and it can keep growing and sustain itself for days or weeks at a time, comes and goes. I don't know, it's weird because like, as much as sickle cell is a genetic issue, it's also heavily um, represented in peoples of colors and minorities. And because this country hasn't always been the most like partial to peoples of color, um, there was natural resistance around, particularly around uh, pain medication and addiction and things like that. I, I think we have to be honest. There is racial bias built into the healthcare system. There's racial bias, unfortunately, built into American culture. And I think it, what patients will say, and I believe it's 100% true, is that they are treated differently because they're African American. And so when they show up in an emergency room or in another setting and say they have pain, they face more skepticism. And they're very aware, a lot of them are very aware that there is a racial aspect to that. I'm always worried about, the, about how a doctor perceives me. Do they think I'm an addict? Do they think that I'm drug seeking? Or do they see a woman who has sickle cell, who has been in pain almost her entire life and needs this to live? I personally, to my knowledge, have not been labeled a drug seeker, but I do know that it's something I'm always aware of. Oh, do I get nervous to be labeled a drug seeker? Absolutely. Especially because my life circumstances might have been, might have added to the likelihood of it as well, right? So a lot of times with sickle cell, what people don't understand is not, it's not just the disease that affects your life as it pertains to stuff like, oh, I don't feel good, or oh, I, I'm, pain, I'm in pain. It affects you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, all of those things, which is everybody deals with that stuff. But it also affects the things that are necessities to live in this country, like job employment, and the way we look at people who might need government assistance. Um, and when those things begin to compile, <clears throat> it creates a profile that might not speak to the true nature of that person. People um, deny some of my patients care, so they will go to a pharmacy to fill, and they say, I'm sorry, that's not okay with the current opiate laws. Without understanding the opiate legislation, they'll deny them their refills because they feel like, oh, they're on too much. And I said, those opiate laws are for acute pain. Those are not for chronic pain, so I've had some pretty frank conversations um, with some with trying to educate people. It's, it's so disconcerting. If this is what they're asking me, imagine how they're treating my patient. Well, I think the pendulum has swung. I mean, there was a time when it was considered appropriate to treat pain. I mean, we hear about pain was the fifth vital sign and nobody should have to be in pain and it's very appropriate to give opioids. And so, although that may have harmed a lot of patients who were overtreated for pain and became addicted, it probably was good for sickle cell patients, right? That at last there was a general um, movement to take pain seriously and treat it. Um, unfortunately, now that the pendulum has swung the other way, sickle cell patients are affected by that. Because a lot of people that I know, man, they don't have a lot of faith in the health system or even their doctors right now. It's kind of. Um, kind of messed up with this opioid epidemic. I have, I have friends that are scared to ask the doctors to, um, um, to um, do something about their medication. You know, they're in the hospital, like they're, they're admitted. If I could use a leave, I would use a leave. You know what I'm saying? But leave don't really work for this. So yeah, that, uh, that is still on my mind. So some of the way I govern myself now is because I'm like, I don't want to be labeled that way. When I was recovering from my stroke, I was having severe nerve pain. 
and they couldn't figure out what was going on, but essentially my brain just didn't know how to express the pain that I was in. And so I had nerve pain just spiking through my body and my body would just seize up for like seconds at a time and then it would go. And regular pain meds weren't working. They were like, okay, let's try ketamine. And I heard that and I was like, no, no. Like the doctor said, this is what we should give you. And I said, no, because I was like, that's like a really big drug. I don't want to be on that. I don't want to be seen on that. And that was my thought. Like, I don't want to be one of those patients that they think is a drug seeker. I don't think, I don't want them to think that I'm faking this. So I said no, because I didn't want to be the one. Uh, I didn't want to be that patient. I never feel comfortable, never. Um, whenever I call in for a prescription for my pain medicine, I'm never sure if I'm going to get it. I'm never sure what day or what the amount is going to be because there has been times when doctors have changed the amount that I'm given and haven't even spoken to me. I was asking for pain medicine and uh, the nurse said, you're going to become addicted. My doctor came down, he said, what's wrong? He said, she's crying and she's hurting and she wants her pain medicine. He said, give it to her. He said, because if she's in that much pain, the pain is going to override the medicine. What you think your body needs, because at the end of the day, you know what your body needs. You know, you're the one that takes it. So when they, they oh, we're going to drop it and we're going to try this and try that, you know, it's kind of, um, it's kind of selfish, I want to say. It's kind of selfish, because at the end of the day, you're playing with somebody's health. The word addiction is thrown around a lot, and it's painful to hear. It, it actually hurts to hear that word from a doctor who is supposed to be caring for you. Um, I don't think that you should speak in an accusatory tone. Um, that's happened to me a lot. I like direct... Um, or sometimes open-ended questions when it comes to pain medication. I don't like um, questions that have a sarcastic tone or a, um, a tone that can undermine me or is meant to make me feel like I have no say in my treatment. So I, I think that if those things can be avoided, then we can find the right way. In that moment, at that time, you don't have a context. Just believe the patient. That's what we were taught to do. Believe what's going on at that moment. And and, and we'll we'll figure it out long term. But 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 take care of them in that moment and recognize that whatever they're going through, they're a human being that's suffering. And so take care of them, treat them that way.